There's a policy in New York City of uh, stop and frisk. Now, Mayor Bloomberg has gone unbelievable uh, on this policy. Now, some of it makes sense. So like in the old days, when Giuliani did this, as much as I don't like Giuliani, I thought it made sense and I thought he was good on this. You gotta be fair, credit where credit is due. And the guys that would jump the turnstiles of the subways, they would stop them and then find out that they had warrants out for their arrest, et cetera. That strategy worked. I'm not against that, and those guys were breaking the law, and then you found out that some of them were worse criminals, okay? Now, this stop and frisk when it comes to drugs has gotten out of control. Uh, of course, there is one guy who's in favor of it. It's Bill O'Reilly. He's gonna go on Fox and Friends. After you listen to him, I'm gonna give you the real facts. Now, let's watch first. And this is about racism. This is a racial story, not a drug story. Um, here in the city, we have stop and frisk policy, which has brought crime way down in New York, way down, okay? And what that is, is the cops know who the wise guys are, they know who the dealers are, they know who the punks are, and they know who the, the muggers are. And they try to get these guys on anything. It's like getting Al Capone on tax evasion instead of murder, all right? So they know these guys carry pot and other drugs, and they stop and they frisk and they find them and they send them into the system. Right. That's what drives crime down. Get them off the street. Mm -hmm. The left hates that, <laughs> hates it, because it is racial profiling, but it's really criminal profiling. However, there are a number of people who are stopped and frisked who don't have anything, mm -hmm. and they get angry, and I understand that. Right. But it's a crime-fighting technique that they're now going to take away from the NYPD. And mark my words, street crime in New York will go up because of that. Did you follow all that? In the beginning, he said, this is a racist policy. And then he said, I love it. Okay, we need it. He said, yeah, you know, he began by saying this is about race, right? That they do target race. Well, that part he's right about, because I'm going to show you the numbers in a second, right? But then he turned into, well, you know, it's not racial profiling, it's criminal profiling. They had it coming anyway. And he said it's okay because they know who the wise guys are and they know who all the criminals are and they're using this to get them like they got Al Capone. And then later at the end he said, well, a lot of times they don't get the right guy. Uh, that's too bad. Not too bad. You racially profile yeah, because O'Reilly thinks that that's a great idea. That's the way to go. And he, uh, and he says the left will go crazy if you try to reduce crime like that. No, but wait, I just told you. Crime did go down under Giuliani, and it was because he went after the squeegee guys sometimes, and you know people had issues with that, but the turnstile guys and the little, small amount of crime. But here they're stopping and frisking people. The guy doesn't, doesn't have marijuana on him visibly. When they stop and frisk, they say, okay, now you have to turn out your pockets. Oh, we found marijuana, that's it, now it's a misdemeanor, okay? Now that goes on your record, and you're screwed for the rest of your life. Now, Andrew Cuomo thinks this is insanity. He's the governor of, uh, of New York, and he says, we gotta get this to stop. I'm gonna get to that proposal in a second, but first, the facts. Uh, last year alone, do you know how many stop and frisk there were? 685,724. That's just a shocking number. That's one city in one year. That's unbelievable amount of stop and frisk. And how much has it increased under Bloomberg? 600%. Are there no bounds of reason? I mean, there was a stop and frisk policy. This is on steroids. It's increased 600%. Now, who does it target? 87% of the people that were stopped were blacks or Latinos. 87%. Now look, there's a lot of blacks and Latinos in New York City. What's the number? About 50%. 50% of the city is black or Latino. But 87% of the people that are stopped and frisked are black or Latino. Now does that seem a little disproportionate? <laughs> you betcha. You. you think they're stopping and frisking the guys at Wall Street? Like they're about to go into a board meeting, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, like hey, you, you, get up against the wall. I'm gonna stop and frisk you. You think that's how it works? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. If you think that's how it works, you have no idea how this world works and you're in a lot of trouble. Go get help, okay? So this is wildly discriminatory, which actually, as I showed you, O'Reilly agreed with in the beginning, then he just turned around and said he likes it that it's discriminatory against blacks and Latinos. He said, well, I mean, come on, if you're not stopping and frisking blacks and Latinos disproportionately, well, then you're not really fighting crime. Why, because obviously they're the criminals. Ignore the real criminals, by the way, that stole trillions of dollars from us up on Wall Street. But then those guys, no, 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 leave them alone, kids gloves, kids gloves. You're black or Latino, throw you against the wall, stop and frisk you. Well, the good news is Governor Cuomo, as I said, is trying to stop this, and now uh, Bloomberg has been shamed into 
agreeing that they should decriminalize possession of 25 grams or less of marijuana that's in public view. When they say public view, it means stop and frisk because it's not initially in public view, but the cops make you empty out your pockets, then it becomes in public view. Now, you would still have to pay a $100 fine, but at least it wouldn't go on your record. It wouldn't be a misdemeanor. Doesn't mean they're not going to continue to harass blacks and Latinos. They are, right? It just, well, you know, this tiny little thing where it's no, which is very important in the lives of a lot of people, though, is that they at least don't call it a misdemeanor anymore. Now, it hasn't passed yet, but that's what they're uh, going to do. So let's hope that that uh, is the case. Here's the other crazy idea that, of course, Bill O'Reilly won't agree with, and apparently the authorities in New York won't agree with. Stop stopping frisking minorities. If you have a reasonable basis to do it, look, it's a corner. I used to live in a corner, uh, 109th in Amsterdam in New York City, where they dealt drugs. Everybody knew they dealt drugs. I worked in the prosecutor's office. We knew. I lived on the street. We knew. The guy on the corner. He sells drugs. Now, you have reasonable suspicion because that's where they've been selling drugs all this time. Go ahead and stop and frisk that guy. Nobody's against that. We're not against you do preventing crime. You know what? I'm on that corner. I'm going to my house. Stop and frisk me. Okay, I get it, right? But all, if all this is, hey, you know what? Let's just use this as an excuse to stop and frisk blacks and Latinos. What? If you do the percentages, what? Over half a million times in one year? Well, that ain't right, man. And it, and it leads to what is reality, unfortunately, this feeling of gross injustice that happens over and over and over again. And at some point, people are going to break. They're going to say, enough of this. We can't take this anymore. They don't know where people's breaking points are.